We'll take a breather from politics now and reflect on a poignant piece of Australian history on a foreign battlefield. On this day, 94 years ago, at the height of the First World War, Australian soldiers attacked well-entrenched German positions around the small French village of Fromel. What followed was arguably the bloodiest single day in this nation's history. In just 24 hours, more than 5,500 soldiers were killed, wounded or captured. Now, the remains of 250 soldiers, most of them Australian, have been recovered from German-dug mass graves and reburied in a brand new war cemetery in Fromel. 96 of them have been identified using DNA, and that has meant relatives in Australia now have a very direct and personal link with a part of France many have never seen until now. The ABC's Europe correspondent Philip Williams reports from Fromel. When you look at um, look down the list of those killed, and you look at the ages, you just can't believe it. They're all 18, 20, 22, 23. It's like they've they've just wiped out the youth of a young nation. It's been a long journey to this place, a proper burial, a new graveyard, with names on at least some of the headstones and an unexpected closeness for the relatives of those killed in these distant fields 94 years ago. I'm not a teary sort of a guy, but um, it, uh, my throat choked up and my eyes welled up and, um, yeah, I was just lost for words. It's almost as if Harold had suddenly come to life. You know, he was a real person. Does you see the resemblance? The moment Justin Burke learned DNA tests had confirmed the identity of his uncle Harold's remains is something he and his family will never forget. Suddenly it all became real. It was just, yeah, it was a very, um, almost a spiritual moment. Queensland strawberries, Derma six dollars, out they go, beautiful Camarosa strawberries. Justin Burke had grown up with the stories of an uncle killed somewhere in France but it was a chance visit to the Australian War Memorial in Canberra that started a long process of discovery of the Fromel connection. DNA swabs confirmed Uncle Harold had died that terrible day, something the soldier's mother had never accepted. She always thought that he had got waylaid or he'd escaped or, you know, he'd, he'd gone to England or something like that and he would be home at any time, so till the day she died. It's been a painstaking process, months of careful excavation of the mass grave sites, where the Germans had buried the Australian and British dead, with, it appears, at least some dignity. Then the forensics, linking fragments of lost lives with the living. The DNA extracted from the teeth and bones of the dead matched with saliva swabs from living relatives. Now ghosts had names and people who cared. So I have a son, Sam, who's, who's 22, and, um, and I, I look at him and, and I look and I think he's the same age, you know, to die in such tragic circumstances. Sam, read me that part of the letter you read yesterday. I haven't seen anything of Les yet, but I saw a couple of his mates and they tell me he's doing tip-top and looking the picture of health. There is no need to ask about me, though, for I've never felt better in my entire life than what I do now. Well, Mum, this is about all the time I have left and I would love to tell you a lot more about the place and the trip. Do you realise he died just 16 days after he wrote that to his mum? There he is. There he is. Harold John Burke. Harold John Burke. Finally found him. 20,000 kilometres and 94 years apart and yet somehow the distance and time don't seem so relevant. I think 5,000, over 5,000 will die. It's all skills. around here, everywhere, everywhere you look. At Cobber's Corner, the bronze statue celebrates the extraordinary courage as soldiers risk their lives to rescue wounded mates stuck in no man's land after the battle. Our blood is here, our blood is here, you know. And we, we probably feel, well, myself, I feel probably, you know, we have an affinity here, you know. We have, we have some sort of um, uh, meaning to the land, uh, as it were, you know, like it's... Um, as a Burke has, has died here. That's pretty special, isn't it? We look through the, um, through the cemeteries and look at the age of these young men 
And you have a generation. You have a generation, not only of Australians, of Canadians, of New Zealanders. You have a generation of people, you know, just wiped out, you know. So those left behind, the, the, the women left behind, then, you know, they don't have husbands and so there's no children. It, it just goes on and on and on, the effects from this war. Graveyard after graveyard, for endless kilometres, the white headstones mark some family's tragedy. A brother, a son, a father who did not come home. It's amazing. Unknown, 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 unknown. 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 Just goes on. At least this family can finally it's reconnect with their kin. Harold Burke has a grave and people who care. Almost the story is complete. I mean, it won't be complete until we basically put him to rest. Uh, Philip Williams with that report.